G'day guys, got a physics question for you today where we've got a driver of a car that's going 90 kilometers an hour suddenly sees the lights of a barrier 40 meters ahead. It takes the driver 0.75 seconds before he applies the brakes and once he does begin to brake he decelerates at a rate of 10 meters per second squared. Now the two questions we've got to answer are does he hit the barrier? Very important question. And B, which I think is the more interesting question, what would be the maximum speed at which the car could travel and not hit the barrier? 40 meters ahead. Okay, so first of all, when I'm, whenever I'm doing a question like this, I like to sort of draw up a picture of my scenario so I can sort of uh, visualize what I'm trying to deal with. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw a picture of my scenario. Okay, so now we've got our picture. What we need to do is we need to convert all of our figures into like standard units. So in here we have 90 kilometers an hour we have to convert that into meters per second. So the way we do that is we're just going to go 90 kilometers an hour divided by 3.6 and that's equal to 25 meters per second. Great. And this is in meters, that's in seconds, that's in meters per second squared. Great. So now we have everything in the same uh, standard units. We can begin the actual working out of the question. So, part A. Now, does he hit the barrier? So what we first have to um, sort of acknowledge here is the motion of the guys in the car is going to be... Uh, broken up into two parts, I think the best way to describe it is. There's the part where he, they're still going whilst they're reacting to the fact that they've just seen this barrier, and then there's the part where they decelerate. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this 40 metres up into two components. So we've got this component, and we've got this component. So the first component is where they're going to be driving along their merry way whilst they are still reacting to the fact that they've seen it and jamming on the brake. And then the second component is when they'll be decelerating. So let's call this one, this is our distance S1. And let's call this distance S2. Just because uh, it's, it'll be easier to just break the whole thing into two different parts. Now, from here what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, well, the first part, S1, is just going to be how fast he's going multiplied by the time that he go, drives it for, so the reaction time. So in this case, we're going to go S1 is just equal to velocity times time, which in this case is equal to 25 metres a second times by... 0.75 seconds. We don't need the S there. And that, guys, is equal to 18 0.75 meters. So almost half of the stopping distance is now taken up with him reacting to the wall being there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to figure out, well, how long is it going to take him to stop from 25 metres a second to nothing? And for this part of the question, we're going to make use of the formula V squared equals U squared plus 2 times A times S. And we're going to try and solve for S. Now, V squared is our final velocity, which hopefully will be zero if we're able to stop in time. And that's going to equal our u squared, which is u is 25, our initial velocity. 25 squared plus 2 times acceleration. Now we're decelerating at 10 meters a second, so that's going to be negative 10 times our distance s. And this is going to be S2. Cool, so let's work out what we have here. 
we just take it up to here, we have 0 equals 25 squared is 625 minus 20 times S2. Cool. So S2 is going to be equal to 625 divided by 20, which, guys, is equal to 31 point two five meters. Now, hopefully you guys will realize that 18.75 plus 31.25 is greater than 40. So then the answer for part A of this question is no. He will not stop in time. Full stop. Great. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to start part B. Now, part B I find is a, quite a lot more interesting than part A because we have to basically do exactly the same thing, but we have to do everything in terms of his initial velocity and then try and solve it. So what we're going to do is for part B, the way that we're going to set this out is we're going for the maximum speed, he's going to stop as he's touching the wall. So he's going to nudge the wall or he's just going to stop a nanometer from the wall. So as a result, we know that S1 plus S2 is, has to equal, you guessed it, 40 meters. Okay, for S1, we know that S1 is equal to our initial velocity, which we're going to label x, because that's what we're trying to solve for, times the time in which we take to react, which is 0 0.75. So in this case, S1 is equal to 0 0.75 times the velocity that we are going, we're going to try and solve for x. Now, S2 is a little bit more complicated. So S2 is, we're going to, we used the formula v squared equals u squared plus 2as. Now, what we rem Oh, hopefully you guys remember, is V squared, our final velocity, was zero. When you're stopped, your final velocity will obviously be zero. U squared is what we're trying to find, which we're going to call X squared, plus two times the acceleration, which is negative 10, times by the distance. Now this part is a clever bit, we'll do that in the second bit. So the distance, we'll call it that, S2. Great. So as you can see at the moment, guys, we've got um, two variables in this second equation. Let's just make everything in terms of S2. So we're going to have S2. Jesus. S2 is equal to x squared on 20. Great. Now, from here, we have to have something that relates S1 to S2, so we can get rid of one of these variables. But if we look, what we could do is, rather than even doing that, we can just plug in our S1s and our S2s into this initial function. So, stay with me guys. 
this S1 plus S2 equals 40. For S1, what we're going to do is we're going to write 0.75x plus S2, which is x squared on 20. And that's going to equal 40. Now, what we can do is we can make this all over the same base because this is equal to 3 over 4x. So we can multiply everything. If we put this all on the same base, 3 over 4 will become 15 over 20. So we're going to have 15x plus x squared all on 20 equals 40. And then what we can do is we can take that 20 to the other side by multiplying both sides by 20. And 40 times 20 is 800. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring that 800 over to the other side. And we're going to have x squared plus 15x minus 800 equals 0. Now from here you can either solve it using the quadratic formula and just for, you know, this is just off from memory, it's x would equal the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. all on 2a. You could use that. You could use uh, a calculator with solving ability or you could complete the square. They'll all give you the same answer and that is that x is going to have to be equal to negative 15 plus or minus 5 times the square root of 137 on 2, which one of these will give a negative answer, which doesn't make sense, but the one that gives a positive answer gives us 14.26 meters per second. And that, my friends, is our the maximum speed that this guy can be going. So he was going 25 initially, and as a result, he hit the wall. So if he was going 14 and a quarter meters a second, he wouldn't have hit the wall. Well, he would just tap the wall, I guess. So, you know, guys, it's a relatively complicated question which involves breaking down a stopping distance into a stopping distance that is part of your reaction time and a stopping distance which is associated to your deceleration. But once you've um, sort of separated them, and I think the picture is kind of vital in this case, you it makes the question a hell of a lot easier. But again, practice, practice, practice makes perfect. Um, if you have any problems with it, just ask me a question. I've no problem responding to your comments. But yeah, just keep on practicing, guys. Give me a like, subscribe to my channel, and um, enjoy your physics. See you next time.